The brief stopover in Cork was going to earn Cunard nearly half a million pounds and the shipping line's arrangements were strict. Before 6am, security baggage searches were being made as passengers who'd paid from £800, up to more than £2,000 for the four-day crossing, prepared to board a tender at Cove that would carry them out to the liner. It was very nostalgic for the port, recreating the voyage of the Sirius, the first steamship across to America, which also left Cork, as did many emigrants, seeing their last sight of home from the water. But this was a different and enjoyable occasion, the first liner back to Cork for 17 years. I don't think we'll ever see the merchandise type of liner coming again, but these luxury liners could well do, and people seem to be very interested by the number of people that are travelling this morning. I'm very excited, I can't believe I'm going. It's my first real holiday in about 44 years. I was a dispensary doctor in Donegal and retired two years ago. And I feel I'm, I'm always like the sea, so I felt this would be an ideal holiday. I'm going to see my son, first and foremost, but I want, always wanted to go on the QE2, so this is the opportunity. Marvellous, terrific atmosphere. Everybody seems very happy and looking forward to their trip. I suppose the QE2 holds a great attraction for us. And uh, lots of our friends are going, so it's nice to be with them all. A big flotilla of pleasure craft greeted the QE2. Boats had set sail from all over Cork Harbour as early as 3 a.m. to make the rendezvous. And making a special trip was the Ballycotton lifeboat, delivering from their village the original Bible from the Sirius to be carried on the commemorative trip. And she found work to do. A small motorboat developed engine trouble, and the family had to be taken in tow by the lifeboat. The big concentration of pleasure craft presented problems for the tender Killorna, refurbished and provided for the occasion by the National Nautical College in Cork. As she manoeuvred alongside the huge liner, it wasn't an easy task. But as she completed it, Cork Harbour manager Pat Keenan was hoping this visit would restart the liner trade. Well, this puts Cork Harbour back on the world map again. It's uh, 17 years now since the uh, last of the scheduled liner services uh, left Cork. And uh, it was the Queen Elizabeth II was the last one in October 1971. Um, the Cunard, uh, when they decided to come here, uh, didn't expect to get the number of people that they've got now and on the strength of that they're back again in August and they're hoping to do a number of trips in 1970 and 1989. So are you hopeful that for Cork Harbour this might mean the recreation of a line or train? Uh, I think so. Uh, I think we've proved that the demand is there and uh, the company will be back. Quarter past seven and the tender is just coming alongside the Cunard liner QE2. It's a big occasion here in Cork Harbour. There are so many pleasure craft and other small boats out around here. It's said that in Cork Harbour this morning it's not been possible to hire a boat to get out to see the vessel if he hadn't one booked several days ago. When the QE2 was lost in Cork, there had been a problem about arms which were found aboard, but this time was happier. I'm very pleased to be here myself, and I think the reception that Cork has given us this morning has been magnificent, all these small boats out. And now the sun's coming out, so a there beautiful is a, day. There is a great atmosphere down there. Do you think this could be the start, maybe, of a rebirth of the liners coming to Cork? I hope that it will. I know that we're coming here more this year. We have another call, I think it is in August, coming here. So it's, it's nice for us to be coming back in, yes. So altogether, good atmosphere, a pleasant occasion. Very much so.